Welcome to the library. So here at the, on the second floor of the library, we have set up a print salon where we are printing uh, the, the face shields that will be used for instruction here at the University this uh, coming semester. We have, uh, we have printers set up that are printing the halos for the face shields. And these printers are collected from around campus. The library itself has several printers, but the math department, the makerspace, as well as the most lab have contributed printers uh, to the effort here as well. So this is not how it normally looks, but for now, as we're going through production, uh, we have this uh, set up uh, for as a manufacturing environment. So we have our Kanban there where we're maintaining uh, an idea of what our production is and keep us to keep us rolling. And we have a variety of printers here who are essentially printing uh, printing these halos in a two-up format. With all of the uh, printers in operation, we're able to produce about eight halos an hour. So uh, all of our machines uh, that we have making the halos are Lulzbot TAS 6s. Um, and they're using um, their fused filament printers that are using um, about 25 grams of filament for every, uh, every halo. The actual shield material, both the forehead gasket as well as the lower shield part, we're using these computerized cutters here uh, that we've installed in the library. The face shield that we've developed here is based on an open source design uh, that we started with at the beginning of the pandemic. That design was one we worked with the Western UP Health Department and produced for medical staff and uh, medical staff and first and uh, frontline responders to the pandemic. So this design um, was one we got a lot of feedback on from uh, from nurses and medical staff in terms of fit and comfort. We took that feedback and we made several modifications to it, developing a prototype that we then tested here at the university. The prototype that this was based on was subjected to. Uh, basically four dimensions of testing. And one, uh, the most important dimension of testing is whether or not it actually stops respiratory droplets uh, for people who are uh, in front of the speaker. So uh, Will Cantrell and Raymond Shaw and their development teams uh, test, were kind enough to test this uh, prototype for us and determined that uh, for a speaker um, speaking what they can, in what they called worst, a worst case scenario, uh, respiratory droplets were below detection limits after one foot from in front of the viewer, excuse me, from in front of the speaker. Based on feedback we had gotten from faculty uh, users, we made several other modifications. So we, we broadened the, uh, uh, the fit of it and also created contours to better, uh, better fit with the head, added a piece of vinyl to, uh, to um, enhance the fit, excuse me, to, invent, to enhance the comfort, uh, to allow it to be worn for longer periods of time. Uh, there was acoustic testing by Josh Lohr, and the acoustic testing demonstrated that the best design for the face type was uh, across the mouth was to be uh, more of a rounded shape. To reduce glare, we've tried to keep a flat shape toward uh, up near the eyes. We've also, uh, based on faculty feedback, wrapped the shield more around the head and under the chin. This creates, um, this creates a person's, basically this directs a person's exhalation uh, behind them when they're speaking and this enhances the, uh, um, the effectiveness of the shield. We also had feedback from folks from Bob Page and uh, researchers at the meme. Um, who uh, coached us on, on uh, strengthening the design and making it less fragile and more flexible. And finally, we've gotten, we got a lot of feedback from uh, 14 different faculty testers who are using it in different environments, including instructional environments. A lot of that feedback we were able to incorporate into the design as far as making it more comfortable and more effective. A lot of it is uh, feedback that we're still working to figure out how we can incorporate. And so this is still an evolving design as we're moving ahead. So the face shield was designed specifically for an instructional environment. We did made modifications to uh, enhance the fit to allow it to be worn comfortably for uh, a fair amount of time. So 
it fits pretty comfortably. If you've got um, a smaller head, you can use a rubber band to tension it across the back. And when you're instructing, you take your face mask off. And we designed it with a flare out to the side as well as the wrap around uh, to be compatible with stand with a boom of standard headsets. Right now, while well, we've produced uh, we've produced just over 850 of the shields uh, to get us started for the semester, and we're moving on to uh, continue that production. We also have orders for uh, for face shields to be used uh, within the local community and the local uh, educational environments in the in the school district.